you are entering a safe space. Please take a moment to center yourself and allow every thought, worry, and care to fall away right now. Focus on taking deep breaths and allow yourself to feel the healing freedom that is waiting to be ignited within you. Welcome to the Loud Whisper Reignite Your Voice podcast. This is your healing space, providing you with hope and inspiration as you become more connected to yourself. Connected to yourself. Your safe vessel, helping you move to a higher consciousness to reignite your voice and discover who you are destined to be. I am Isabel Drone, your host. I am also an author, entrepreneur, and a life transformation and spiritual coach. Most importantly, I am a perpetual student of life, just like you. So let's explore together. Claim what is already inside you. If you have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. If you know of anyone that would benefit from listening to this podcast, please make sure you share the link with them. But thank you so much for being with us today. It's always a joy and a pleasure to have you on this, listening to this podcast. But today is a great day. I am extremely excited because this is our new season Um, I hope you guys missed us, but we're back. This is the new season of the Loud Whisper podcast. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I am going to start off this new season. And in fact, in this season, I'll be doing a lot more solo episodes. And of course, I'll still continue to interview people. It's always important to have other people come on. So in case there's some people who don't resonate with what I'm saying, they have a variety to hear what other people's thoughts and feelings are. So Thank you so much for being here today. Today, I want to talk to you about when God sits you down. Yes, I said when God sits you down. I've been wanting to do this talk for a while, but I'm starting to understand now when the time is right. And now it is that the time is right in this new season as we come mid-year to talk about when God sits you down. This happened to me in... uh, Last year, it happened last year, September of 2023, I was having some health issues and I had to undergo surgery in September. I will talk about what kind of surgery I had exactly, not in this episode. I'll actually create an episode and talk about that. The reason why I do want to do that is I've come to the realization as women, there's so much shame associated to our bodies. So we don't talk about what we're experiencing. We don't talk about our bodies. We do not talk about how our bodies are changing. We don't help one another to say, you know, your body is going to do this or be ready or just to be able to hear from other women as to what they're experiencing when it comes to their body. This is a male dominant society. So of course, most of the doctors are male. If you pay attention, men always have the treatments that they need for their bodies. But for women, it's really, um, we have a hard time. And I feel it's time for us to start advocating for ourselves, to really advocate, self-advocate. And the best way to do it is by sharing our stories and making sure that we educate one another as to what we have experienced and to be able to give people permission and knowledge of what they could be going through and, you know, to be able to give pointers. I feel that we can do that for one another. We can start there. So we'll have a podcast solely talking about, yeah, the surgery that I had and for us women to really dive a little bit deeper and stop being ashamed of our bodies. These are, this is our temple. This is the vessel that God created. There's nothing to be ashamed of. So we need to talk about it more so we're able to help one another move through these different um, experiences of life that we all have to go through. But today we're talking about when God sits you down. 
September of 2023 is when I had surgery. This was right after my Loud Whisper Women's Conference. My second year, I hold an annual women's conference. Um, it was the second year, so I think it was the following week I had to undergo surgery. Let me tell you something. Even through my conference, the amount of pain that I was experiencing, only God. So I did go through surgery, and um, I did have a partial hysterectomy, of course, I'm letting you know so you can understand why God had me sitting down. And um, so with that, that means they're removing organs from my body. So my body has to kind of reconstruct itself, come together, bind itself again. So obviously, what did that mean? I'd have to do a lot of resting. I'd have to do a lot of sitting down and being still. For those of you that know me, a lot of people have always told me during the year, Bella, slow down. Slow down, Bella. You're moving too fast. Bella, slow down. I, I was always the one, get it done. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. But I think it was time and God really sat me down. It was a powerful experience. It was a fearful experience. It was um, a growth experience, but I have to tell you, there were challenges, especially in the beginning, because I had to sit still. The first week, I literally had to sit in my bed, not move, not do anything. They would have to bring food to me and everything that I required, they brought to me, apart from, of course, being able to use the bathroom. And that was pretty tough for me because I'm constantly moving. I'm constantly, let's go, let's get it done. I know you've heard me talk about stillness. Well, I thought that I was being really still back then in which I practiced stillness, but apparently I was not really practicing stillness until when God showed me this form of stillness that I'm about to talk to you about. So the first week was okay. The first week was challenging. The second week became more challenging. You know why? Because I had to sit. I had to sit with my thoughts. I had to sit with my feelings. I had to sit with my emotions. Some of the things that I was not ready to deal with, some of the things that I was not ready to confront, I had to sit with them. And you know why? I didn't have nowhere to go. Literally had to sit down. But as time went by and days went by, that stillness, that solitude, that aloneness, I never felt lonely at all. Oh my gosh, it became, it started becoming so powerful, extremely powerful. I'll give you a perfect, I'll give you an example. My husband and I, we both, we were on a construction business together. So that means that when I was at home being still and life is going on, I'm able to do things on the computer, but I'm not physically in the office helping move stuff, helping, you know, run the business. So he would come to work and when he comes home, he's telling me what's going on or I'm seeing through emails. But anyway, to make a long story short, I remember him walking in one day and I don't know about you guys, but 2023 was a roller coaster for some of us, especially us who are in business. So he would come home and we would discuss what, what's going on. And I could see, you know, him being fearful, him being really disturbed about what was happening. But let me tell you, each time he walked in the house and he started explaining to me, oh, talk on the phone, what's going on, what we needed to do, what challenges that we were having with the business. I was not fearful. I did not have anxiety. I was still. And I remember him walking in one day telling me about what was happening at work. And this is what I say to him. It will be okay. He said, what? I said, it will be okay. He looks at me and he says, gosh, I don't know how you do it. How did you get here? What do you mean it will be okay? Aren't you afraid? My response to him was, I'm too afraid to not believe. I was too afraid to not believe. Because the more I sat in my stillness, the more I dealt with my emotions, 
my feelings, my thoughts that were constantly ruminating, putting fear in me, the more God showed me how faithful he is. The more solitude I have, my faith grew. Because I couldn't get up, I couldn't do anything. Yeah, I could do stuff on the computer, but physically I could not move. I couldn't be at the office. I couldn't do all these different things that I wanted to do. I wanted to fix it. I'm the fixer. About it. Let's get it done. I couldn't do any of those. I was still, this time, on the couch, week after week. And he said, what do you mean by that? I told him, I said, God has been so good to us. I'm too afraid to not believe. Too afraid to not believe. And he says to me, he says, wow. Okay. So each time he would tell me things, all I could say is that it will be okay. It will be okay. Because I started getting to the place where God had sat me down and I wasn't just accidentally moving through life because God had showed me when I sat down that I was accidentally moving through life. You know, I always say, and I believe this, that we're guided every day, that God guides us every morning. And I thought that I was really practicing stillness. I thought I was really practicing the flow of life, but apparently I I was not doing what I was supposed to do because it was a totally different feeling when when I was sitting down, waiting, just waiting for God. And I got to a point in my life, and I'm still there, that during that period of stillness, during that period of solitude, my faith, my faith just grew. The faith, faith each day. I didn't have a choice but to hold on to God's word. I didn't have a choice but to trust and believe. I no longer had that false idea that if I'm at the office, I'll fix it, get it done, do this and this and this. I didn't have any of that power. The only thing that I had was me trusting that God is going to heal me and God is going to make sure that me and my family are okay during this time. And what I started to see was also one of the issues that I was having is like, I need to get on. I need to move because we need to do this next. We need to do that. So something happens. We need, I need to get here. I need to do this next. We need to acquire this. We need to do that. And I came to the realization as I was sitting in solitude is this. The world that we live in, we're constantly running, wanting what's next. We work so hard to get where we're at. And then when we get there, it's the one, what's next. Let's move to the next thing. That was me. What is next? What is next? And that's why God said to me, you are accidentally moving through life. And when I sat down and really tried to digest that, I'm like, what did that mean? And what I got from it was I was accidentally moving through life, meaning no matter how much I had accomplished, I was ready for the next thing. What was coming next? So what that means is I never took the time to appreciate what God did for me because when I said I wanted to go to the next thing, that means I had received the thing that I had, that I had prayed for. So I prayed for it. God gave it to me and I'm ready to go to the next. No celebration. No really sitting in gratitude. No reflection as to where I was prior to me getting to this point before I moved to the next thing. I had no reflection to see where the growth was, no reflection to see where some of the decisions I had to let go of, no reflection to see some of the lessons. I just knew that the thing that I had on the board, one of my goals, I had accomplished it. Or the business is on the next level we have accomplished it, right? I was accidentally just moving through life. Every day I do this, I do that, I get exactly what I prayed for, 
And then once I get it, I move to the next thing. I want the next thing. And I notice that all of us live like this. That's the society that we're in. We always move into the next thing. This is what I learned when I was in solitude, when I was alone, but not lonely. There's a difference. I was alone, but not lonely. I felt covered. I felt love. I felt growth inside of me. What I discovered was we're always wanting the next thing. We're always saying, God, give me this. God, do this for me. God, provide this for me. But here is the question. Do we really have the capacity for that of which that we're praying for? We never take the time to appreciate where we're at. We never take the time to celebrate where we're at. We do not take the time to even reflect, to see this is where I've grown. Yeah? To say, this is where I may need to grow some more. Or these are the lessons that I've learned. Or I'm extremely good at this. Whatever it may be. The moment we get to that space when God gives us what we prayed for, we never sit in gratitude for it and celebrate it and own it and feel it. We're like, what is next? What is next? We don't even take the time to see if we have space or capacity for that next thing. We're just constantly moving, constantly going constantly wanting more because when you really look at the picture this is what I was saying to myself some of the things that I wanted God to do for me I honestly didn't have the capacity I did not have the capacity I could receive them but we also know one thing I don't know if you know this about life if you know this in general it's about how we manage what we're given that's what allows us to get to the next level. So we keep asking for more. I was con constantly asking for more while I'm accidentally moving through life. But did I have the capacity to handle what God, what I'm asking for? Because if God gives it to me and I do not have the capacity, you know what that does? It stresses me out, probably put me into a depression probably lose my mind because I have this on my lap that I prayed for, but I don't have the capacity to handle it. So I say this to say, we have to start getting in a space where when you get what you've prayed for, sit down somewhere, celebrate it, own it, Fill it. Let it be yours. That's something you had prayed for. When I started doing that, I stopped the chase. Because I felt fulfilled. I've been doing that all year this year. All year this year. Because I'm feeling fulfilled. When I started appreciating what God has given me, and really be in it, I felt fulfilled. I stopped chasing. What I did was instead, I continued to be in my stillness. I continued to be in my solitude. See, we think that when things stop in our life, our life is bad. No, sometimes things need to stop. Sometimes we do need to stop. Like me, I needed to be sit. God needed to sit me down. I needed to see myself. I needed to really excavate the feelings that I was suppressing. I needed to really feel my emotions and to honestly understand why am I here? Why am I even here at this time? So wherever you are right now, you're meant to be there. Wherever you are right now. You probably prayed for that. And if it's something that you didn't pray for, and if you think you're in a space where you don't even want to be there, pray for God to get you out of it.
But we, we have to start being really mindful about not appreciating and celebrating ourselves where we are in life. We're living in a state of constantly needing and wanting to fill our souls when everything that we need, we have inside of us. We just need to be still enough to understand that we have everything that we need inside of us. You just got to be still enough. And sometimes you may look at your life and you think it's so chaotic and you look at your life and you're saying, my God, why isn't anything working? And some, it could be too, that maybe you do need to sit down. Maybe you do need to really find time for solitude, time to be alone. So you can hear your thoughts. So you can feel where you're at. So you can feel what you're going through. So you can feel your emotions. And also appreciate where you're at. Sometimes things feel so chaotic because we keep trying to get to the next thing when we haven't even handled what we're in. We've not appreciated what we've been given. We always want the next, next, and next. This is what I've learned. The next thing will not give you that fulfillment if you're not fulfilled right now. Now, the next thing will not give you joy. If you are not feeling joy right now, despite your circumstances, the next thing will not give you peace. If you are not at peace at the moment with what God has given you. We've been told a story that every morning we wake up, we have to come continuously just chase. We're chasing material things. We're chasing accolades. We're chasing to be seen a certain way. We are in a state of performing as human beings. We are literally performers. But we don't take the time to be still. To see what God has in store for you. To feel yourself, to feel your feelings, to feel your emotions, to understand. The best thing God would have ever done for me was to sit me down. And especially being a person that runs from, my, I, 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 I operate from my heart. Go, 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 go. Fulfilling everyone else's needs. Thinking the more I do, the more I do, the more I do, the more I get, the more. We're all a part of this cycle. It's a never-ending cycle that is slowly killing us, right? There's, there's two different kinds of death. There's death that somebody actually died, but there's that slow death that some of us experience on a daily basis. That slow death is the death of chasing things that we don't even know if we need. We're chasing things that we don't even know if they will fulfill our soul. We're chasing things that we don't even know if they'll give us fulfillment. And once we get to those things that we're chasing, we don't stop enough to even care to look at what we just received to see the very thing that I was, the very reason why I was chasing these things. Did I feel anything? And the reason why we're constantly in this space and in this cycle is because we do not take the time. to take the time to sit down. We are guided every day. Every morning we wake up, we are guided people each morning. We're guided every morning. You know, so it's important that you take time for solitude so you can be with yourself. It was the hardest thing for me to do, but it was the most healing thing for me to do. God really sat me down. I cried, I laughed, I cried, and I cried, but I didn't realize even all that crying, all the laughing, I was excavating all the things that I was carrying as I was cruising through life, always on the go, 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 as I was accidentally living through life. 
is life worth living really if you don't take the time for yourself? The reason why we feel like we're in chaos and we have a lot of distractions because we don't honor ourselves enough. This is what I noticed about myself. We don't honor ourselves enough to really just take in the life that we have. We don't honor ourselves enough. And if you don't take the time to be still, if you don't take the time to find solitude, if you don't take the time to listen to that loud whisper, that voice inside of you, for me, that's where God speaks the loudest, whoever you subscribe to. If you do not take the time to do that, life is not going to have any meaning. Because you end up living your life based on how you're performing, not based on your being. And when you live a life based on how you're performing, it becomes a very conditional. How do you find happiness in a space like that? How do you find joy in an environment like that? How do you find peace in an environment like that? It's impossible. It's impossible. And we have to understand that we can continue to chase, continue to chase it. And when you receive it, it might not even feel good. Because you're chasing it according to your view of the outside world. Not your inner world. Not what your soul needs. Not what your soul is longing I tapped into my soul when God sat me down. Those six weeks were brutal. But they're only brutal because me as a human being, right, I felt like I was not performing. I didn't think of it that way. Now that I think about it, it's like, gosh, we're always performing. But until I started realizing the power within me, who I am, why I'm sitting down, why God is sitting me down. I appreciated the moments, the quiet moments. I appreciated the moments where I was in solitude. So in whatever you do, make sure you find time for stillness. Make sure you find time for solitude. Make sure you find time to really connect from yourself and to hear, to get the downloads for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you something. We all want to be successful. Really, being successful is our right, right? We were brought onto this earth to dominate the earth. So success is our right, but how are you going about being successful? Are you being like me, like how I was, just constantly going and going and going to the point where God had to sit me down? And another thing about it too, I thought, the amount of things I had missed because I was moving so fast, The amount of things that we miss that God is showing us and God is talking to us because we're constantly going. And here is when you really think about it too, we're constantly just moving and moving. I need to get this done. I need to accomplish this. I need to do this. When he knows the beginning and the end of our lives. We don't trust in the being. We don't trust in the knowing. We don't trust in just understanding. We don't trust in not leaning on our own understanding. Some of the movements that we're doing, all they're doing is bringing chaos into our world. Distractions. It's time to sit down. It's time to create space for yourself. 
to create room for yourself to grow. You have to create room for yourself to grow. Life is not meant to be lived in survival. When we live in survival mode, we suppress our emotions. Then when you suppress your emotions, tell me how you're functioning on a daily basis if you can't even feel your emotions. That's where most of us are. That's where we are today. And social media doesn't make it any better because you feel like you're behind. You're not behind anything. You're brought into this world to do something. You have a gift. Every human being has a purpose. Don't get caught up in the chase. Find time for stillness and solitude and understand why you were brought onto this earth. Understand why you're doing what you're doing. Because what I see is We're always chasing money, but when you die, money doesn't chase you. It goes to the next person. Always chasing money. Always chasing accolades. We're always chasing to be known. This is who I am and I'm smart. This is what I do. And it gives people this idea that their life is it. This idea that if I continue in this space, That was me. That was me. But God sat me down. God needed to sit me down. God needed to show me what I was missing every day by constantly just moving. Just constantly moving. And if I can be honest, the amount of things that I did not notice because I was always on the go, would have actually helped me a lot faster. It would have changed the trajectory of my life a long time ago. A long time ago. But I was too busy trying to move through everything. I was too busy trying to fix everything. I was too busy trying to be everything to everyone. I was too busy doing everything that was not really feeding my soul. There was no fulfillment because I was on the chase. And whatever you're chasing will keep chasing you. I was just on the chase. What was interesting about it too was even with my illness, I was functioning like nothing was going on because I trained myself to do that. I trained myself to keep going even in pain. I trained myself to keep going even in discomfort. I had trained myself to keep going even when my soul couldn't take it anymore. I had trained myself to just keep moving to the point where I was moving so much. By the time I got to my surgery, what was in my body, my goodness, but I ignored it because I was chasing. I ignored it because you know what? It was going to distract me. How am I supposed to work? How am I supposed to make money? It's ironic that we think that way, isn't it? Very ironic. Because if I didn't stop and heal and take care of myself, maybe I wouldn't even be here today. Yeah? We worry so much about the future that we forget our present moment. We forget to live for now. That was me. We forget. So don't let God have to sit you down like he sat me down. Find time for solitude. Find time for stillness. Find time so you can get to know yourself. Find time so you can get to understand yourself. Find time so you can really know why you're here. What are you here to do? This thing of chasing, this thing of looking and being a certain way. I don't know about you guys. It's pretty exhausting to me. 
It's pretty exhausting. And I know the life of survival too well. Now that I even look back in hindsight, like, wow, why was I doing that to myself? Telling myself I'm good at it. While slowly killing myself. It's like the slow death that I just talked about, yeah? Somebody passes and they die. But some of us are living a slow death. Our soul is heavy. Our soul is not happy. We don't know who we are. We don't know why we're here. We spend so much time trying to discover who God created us to be because we don't know who we are in the first place. He sat me down and I had to really, really know who I was. I had to get acquainted to that. Because the gift and the calling that he has on my life does not work with the chase. The gift and the calling that God has on my life does not work for me to be in survival mode constantly. I have to be tapped into my soul. So there's a lot of things I had to give up when God sat me down, a whole lot of things. I felt like when I came out of that, I came out a different person. I emerged a different human being. The very thing that scared me the most is the very thing that set me free. It set me free to the point so much where I'm afraid to not believe. That's how good God has been to me. Despite my challenges, like everybody else, I've had my adversities and still continue to experience those as part of life. It's the duality of it. But the best thing that he could have ever done was put the rug under my feet for me to sit down. So if I can offer you anything today, take a couple of steps back. Look at your life. You don't have to keep chasing that. That's not serving you. That's not fulfilling your soul. You don't have to keep sacrificing yourself for things and people that don't fill your soul. You only have one life to live, just one. Take it from me. Sit down somewhere. Get to know yourself. Look at the blueprints of your life. Look at what you're doing in your life. Because me, if God didn't sit me down, I probably kept on moving, 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 moving like I always do. And you know, the crazy thing is I always used to think like I'm accomplishing so much. Gosh, I accomplish much more now. Much more in my stillness, in me not chasing, in me understanding why I was brought into this world and understanding that my calling does not work with chasing. My calling does not work with chasing. My calling works with stillness and solitude because I have to hear, I have to hear that voice, that little loud whisper inside of me, that guide. I have to be able to hear that. So this game of chasing and this game of being on the hamster wheel, I had to get off of that. So look at your life. Stop slowly killing yourself, trying to obtain and acquire things that will only serve you for a minute. Ask yourself, what do you really need? What do you really need? And get off that hamster wheel. Get off. It's time to get off because if you don't, it's a slow death. You are here. You're moving. We see you, but you're dying inside. And I don't wish that for you. That was me. It's not a great feeling. You want to feel alive. You want to feel alive. 
So some of the things that you're afraid to do, some of the things that probably the most challenging for you, like the most challenging thing for me was when he sat me down. That's the very thing that will set you free. It will set you free to be able to understand that you're here for a reason, you're here for a purpose. But find stillness so you can connect with your soul. So you can listen to that loud whisper. So you know why you're here. It's so exhausting to chase. And that's why a lot of people are exhausted. You're exhausted because you're chasing things that may not even fit with you. You're chasing things that even fit with the making of who God created you to be. So you spend all this time. And then when they come on your lap, that's why we only celebrate it for a second or a minute and keep moving. There's no fulfillment. There's no fulfillment. There's no fulfillment with chasing. Our goal in life is to create space so we can move, allow things to come in, and we can move through life. But that hamster wheel, get off of it. Get off that. You don't need that extra this or extra that. Sit down somewhere for a minute. We're halfway through the year. You still have a few months left to go. Give yourself that. If it's three days, if it's two days, if it's one week, just be with yourself. Hear yourself. Hear your heart. You know, most of the decisions that we make in life come from our heart. Our heart is where we make those decisions. Our heart is truly the subconscious mind. Our mind is the conscious mind. Our heart is the subconscious mind. Most of the, the important decisions and life's decisions happen in the subconscious mind. And that is your heart. That is your heart. So take time to connect with that. Take time to clear that. Take the time to understand yourself. As long as we keep chasing to be like other people, we will continue to live a life that's not fulfilling. Because what other people do is not for us, right? Or even if what other people do, we can do the same thing, but do it your way. But in the only way you can figure out all these things, if you find time for solitude, if you find time to be alone, you will never be lonely, trust me. But make the time to be alone so you can hear your voice, that still voice inside of you, that loud whisper to me, that's God where he speaks the loudest. You owe yourself that before the end of the year. You owe yourself the time of stillness to understand yourself so you can finish this year strong. So you can finish strong. It's a little bit scary, but you'll be fine. I'm here today, listen. I was afraid, but it's the best thing. I move with ease. I move with ease. And I hope that for you. I hope you can get to a space where by the time, by the end of this year, the only thing that you're chasing is your heart. Or really not even chasing. Being with is your heart. But let's really be mindful about being on this hamster wheel, trying to chase and perform and acquire things and bring people in our lives that don't even fit with the makings and the blueprint of who of who God created us to be. Yeah? Start paying attention. Start start really paying attention to what serves you and what matters to you. But the only way you could do that is by you first knowing your self. Know yourself. Celebrate yourself. Live in the moment. Live in the moment. Discover yourself. Learn. Learn. Yeah? And stop having other people tell you who you are. You can do it and you got this. 
So I leave you with this. What season are you in? And what are you doing this season? And are you going to honor yourself? Are you going to trust yourself? Are you going to create that space for you to grow, for the new to come? And are you going to put the act of chasing and performing down and tune in within yourself? Once you do that, everything that is for you, that's supposed to be for you and with you, it will come to you, the chase. I hope this helps you. Thank you for listening to the Loud Whisper Reignite Your Voice podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, please be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a conversation. I would also be honored if you would consider leaving a positive rating and review on Apple Podcasts. As always, you can connect with me through the links in the description. Thanks again for listening. We're so glad you could join us today and look forward to supporting you on your greatest journey. Have a great day.